Hi students, today I'm going to discuss or show you how to solve problems involving factors of polynomials. Here are some tips to come up with correct solution. Number one, write an equation that represents the given information. Meaning, to help you figure it out, you can draw a picture or a diagram. Number two, follow the rules of polynomial equation by factoring. This means that you need to place all polynomials on one side of the equation and set it equal to zero, following the zero product property. And number three, check the reasonableness of answers. This means that you have to discard solutions that do not make sense. Say, for example, time and distance cannot be negative. Further, let us add up in our list of things to remember the following properties which will help you justify in the manipulation of your solutions. So here are the different properties of real numbers. We have the additive inverse property, the additive inverse or the opposite sign or the negative of a number a is that number is a number that when added to a yields zero. In symbols that is a plus the quantity of negative a is equal to zero. Or you can use the transposition for the shortcut. We also have the additive in the identity property, which states that the sum of any number and zero is the given number. So zero is the additive identity. In symbol, a plus 0 is equal to a. We also have the multiplicative inverse property. The multiplicative inverse or the reciprocal of a number a is 1 over a that when multiplied to a, the product is 1. In symbol, a times 1 over a is equal to 1. Multiplicative identity property states that the product of any number and 1 is the given number. A times 1 is equal to A. 1 is the multiplicative identity. We also have the commutative property of addition. The order of the addends does not affect the sum. In symbol, A plus B is equal to B plus A. And the distributive property of multiplication, which states that when a number is multiplied by the sum of two numbers, the first number can be distributed to both of those numbers and multiplied by each of them separately. In symbol, A times the quantity of B plus C is equal to AB plus AC. Now let's have problem 1. The area of a square is numerically equal to 50 times its perimeter. Find the length of a side of the square. So for our solution, we have step 1. Choose a variable to represent what is unknown. In this problem, let s be the length of the side of a square. Then for step 2, we're now going to translate what you are seeing in words into mathematical expression. So this time, we're going to write s squared is equal to 50 times 4s because the perimeter of a square is 4s. And given here, we have 50 times and the area of a square is s squared. Simplify the expression and solve for the Unknown. So here is how it is solved. So equation obtained in step 2, we have s squared is equal to 50 times 4s. We're now going to simplify. So multiply 50 to 4s by 4s, we have 200s. Using the, oh, we're now going to place all polynomials on one side of the equation and set to 0. So we're going to transpose 200s on the left side. So we're going to have s squared minus 200s is equal to 0. Now we're going to factor this. 
the common factor is s. So, we're going to write here s. s squared divided by s is s. 200s divided by s is 200 is equal to 0. Then, using the zero product property, we're now going to equate s is equal to 0. And then, s minus 200, we're also going to equate it to 0. Now, this time, using the additive inverse property, we're now going to get the value of s. So, here in the first one, we have s is equal to 0. And here, we're now going to uh, use additive inverse property. So, we're going to add here 200 and the, on the other side is also positive 200. Negative 200 plus 200, that is 0. So, S is equal to 0 plus 200. The answer is 200. Since the length of a square could not be 0, hence the length of the side of the square is 200, 200 units. Next. Let's have problem number 2. Suppose that 6 times the cube of a number equals 54 times the number. Find the number. Again, for step 1, choose a variable to present the un what is unknown. Since we're going to find the number, let x be the number. Next, translate what you are seeing in words into mathematical expression. We're now going to write... 6 times the cube of a number, that is 6x cubed, equals 54 times the number, which is 54x. Then, simplify the expression and solve for the unknown. For equation obtained in step 2, we have 6x cubed is equal to 54x. Place all polynomials on one side of the equation and set to 0. So, from positive 54x, we're now going to write it in the left side, negative 54x, and then we're going to set it or equate it to 0. Next is, factor the polynomials. 6x cubed minus 54x has a greatest common factor, which is 6x. So, 6x cubed divided by 6x, the answer is x squared. Negative 54x divided by 6x, the answer is negative 9, equal to 0. Using the zero product property, we're now going to get 6x equals 0. Then we're going to divide it by 6 to get the value of x. So x is equal to 0. That is 0 divided by 6, the answer is 0. And then x squared minus 9 is equal to 0. This is a difference of 2 squares. So, to factor it, we have the quantity of x minus 3 times the quantity of x plus 3 is equal to 0. Then again, using the zero product property to get the value of x, x minus 3 is equal to 0 and x plus 3 is equal to 0. Then use the additive inverse property or you can also, for shortcut, you can also transpose. So, negative 3, if we're going to transpose it to the right, that is x is equal to positive 3. And x plus 3, if we're going to transpose it to the right, that will become x is equal to negative 3. Therefore, the numbers are negative 3 or 0 or 3. Next, problem 3. The area of a square is 25y squared. Minus 100y plus 100 square units. What is the length of the side? Again, choose a variable to represent what is unknown. This time, we're going to find the length of the side. So, let y be the number. Translate what you are seeing in words into mathematical expression. Obviously, we have there 25y squared minus 100y plus 100 is equal to 0. And then simplify the expression and solve for the unknown. So for the equation obtained in step 2, again, we have 25y squared minus 100y plus 100 equals 0. Factor the polynomials. We're going to factor 25y squared minus 100y plus 100. 
this is a perfect square trinomial. So the factor is 5y minus 10 times the quantity of 5y minus 10 is equal to 0. And then we're going to use the zero product property. We're going to equate each factor to 0. We have here 5y minus 10 equals 0 or 5y minus 10 equals 0. And then using the additive inverse property or the transposition. So we're going to transpose negative 10 to the right. That is 5y equals 10. And then 5y minus 10, minus 10 again, transpose that will be positive 10. Then multiply both sides of the equation by 1 fifth multiplicative inverse property. 5y divided by 5, 5 will be cancelled. y is equal to 10 over 5, that is y equals 2. Same with the other side. Observe that the value of the unknown is the same, y equals 2. Therefore, the length of the side of the square is 2 units. The answer now is y is equal to, that is the length of the side of the square. Problem 4. The square of a number is 20 more than 8 times the number. Find the number. Choose a variable to represent the unknown. Again, we're now looking for a number. Let z be the number. Translate what you are seeing in words into mathematical expression. The square of a number is 20. That will be square of a number that is z squared is 20 more than 8 times the number. 8z plus 20. And then we're going to simplify. We're just going to first the equation obtained in step 2. And then we're going to place all polynomials on one side of the equation and set to 0. So we have z squared minus 8z minus 20 equals 0. Then we're going to factor this. This is a general trinomial. So two numbers that when multiply is negative 20 and when added is negative 8 is negative 10 and positive 2. So the factors of z squared minus 8z minus 20 is the quantity of z minus 10 times the quantity of z plus 2 is equal to 0. Then using the zero product property, we're going to equate each factor to 0. We have z minus 10 equals 0 or z plus 2 equals 0. Then using the additive inverse property or the transposition for shortcut, negative 10, we're going to transpose where that is positive 10. And then positive 2, we're going to transpose that is negative 2. Since there are two values of the unknown, then the numbers are negative 2 or 10. Now let's have the problem 5. The product of two consecutive integers is 110. Find the value of the integers. Step 1 again, choose a variable to represent what is unknown. We're now going to find the value of integer. So let x be the first integer and x plus 1 be the second integer since the two numbers are consecutive. Then we're now going to translate. That is the product of two consecutive integers is 110. That is x times the quantity of x plus 1 is equal to 110. And then we're going to simplify. Okay, using the additive inverse property, we have here x squared plus x minus 110. We're now going, uh, we, we first sub distribute x to x squared plus 1. So x times x is that is x squared. And then x plus 1 is x times 1 is x. And then, using the additive inverse, we have here 110. So, from positive, it is now negative 110. Next, we have now x squared plus x minus 110 is equal to 0. We're now going to factor. This is a general trinomial. a is equal to 1. The two numbers that when we multiply is 100, negative 110. And when added is positive 1, is 11 and negative 10. Now, the factor of x squared plus x minus 110 is the quantity of x plus 11 times the quantity of x minus 10 equals 0. Using the zero product property, we're now going to equate it to 0. 
we have here x plus 11 minus 11 equals 0 or 0 minus 11 or x minus 10 plus 10 is equal to 0 plus 10. That is the additive inverse property. Error or that is the transposition. So x plus 11 will now become x is equal to negative 11 and then x minus 10 that will become x is equal to 10. Since there are two values of x, then there could be two pairs of consecutive integers. That is, if the first integer is x equals negative 11, then the second integer x plus 1 equals negative 11 plus 1 equals negative 10. The first pair, the first pair of consecutive integers are negative 11 and negative 10. And if the first integer is x equals 10, then the second integer x plus 1 is equal to 10 plus 1 equals 11. The second pair of consecutive integers are 10 and 11. Okay, that's it. Remember, a problem is a chance for you to do your best. From Duke Ellington. Thank you and I hope you learned something today. God bless and take care.